The Boston Celtics suffered a devastating loss to the Chicago Bulls the other day, and as someone who does like the sell, 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 I was happy with that because conflict of interest, but they statistically had the worst fourth quarter blown game ever since the shot clock era. Like, no team has been up 14 going into the fourth and lost by 14 or more since 1959. So not good. But this collapse caused a lot of discussion around the Celtics, and a lot of this was spurred by comments made by Marcus Smart, which we're going to talk about these comments, but really this loss and just the overall poor start from the Celtics this year speaks to the problem with this team that came to be last year, existed a little bit before it, but really blew up last year. And I was hoping it would be gone this year, but clearly the problem has still persisted. And that is that the Celtics from the ground up are just fundamentally broken. So let's talk about it. Before I continue on this video, about half of the people to watch these videos are not subscribed. So if you fall to the 50%, then please subscribe. Also drop a like on this video. It only takes one second. It makes a massive difference. I'm trying to hit 200K subscribers on this channel by the end of the year. So your subscription would be much appreciated. So let's talk about this Bulls game and more specifically Marcus Smart's comments about it. First thing I wanna say in regards to Marcus's comments is I feel a few people have overreacted. This is NBA fans we're talking about, so can't say I'm surprised. There was an element of truth in what Smart said, however, it also shouldn't be something that's said to the media. Now, this might have been something that Marcus has complained about in the locker rooms, to management, to ownership, all that kind of stuff, a million times over, and it's just fallen on deaf ears. But regardless of if that's the case, I don't know that speaking to the media to stir a fire is necessarily the smartest move. No pun intended, because it was Marcus Smart. Anyways. Now, as for the reaction that many people had to immediately point out that Marcus Smart has sucked this season is not really true to how team dynamics are supposed to work, and it's also just reductive and doesn't solve the problem whatsoever. Even if Marcus Smart was wrongly pointing a finger, all you're doing is pointing a finger back and nothing positive comes out of that. But the 15th man has the right to criticize the best player on the team. Marcus was not commenting on their ability, he was commenting on their actions, and those are different things. Like, he is well within his rights to say, hey, don't do that. Steve Kerr, even though maybe this is not the best example because MJ was a fucking dick, but Steve Kerr can say, hey MJ, you should have done this differently. And that's fair. Even if MJ would destroy Steve Kerr in a one-on-one, -on -one, a thousand times out of 99, which doesn't make sense, but you get my point. That's not how it works. Like even thinking back to like Jared Dudley, who is a player that people are like, why is he on NBA teams? Well, he's someone who can actually essentially coach the team, even though he's not very good. And if this was how it works, then why is, you know, Greg Popovich telling Tim Duncan how to play basketball? Because Tim Duncan is better. How, who is he to criticize? It's not how it fucking works. It's especially not how it works in a healthy team dynamic. If Marcus was saying, you know, I'm better than Jason Tatum, feel free to point out the fact that he's shooting 29% from the field and from three. But that's not what he was saying. He was saying, hey, they need to look to pass more. Now, I don't think that was necessarily the case, especially in this game, but regardless, his comment was not insulting them as players. He was saying this is a genuine thing that needs to happen. Again, shouldn't really be said to the media, but I don't think his comments were entirely unfair, and him being bad this year does not make those comments invalid. Now, as for the thing that Marcus said in terms of those guys passing and that being the problem, I think that is incorrect. I think it's just indicative of an overall problem with this team's offense. Also, not passing to Smart specifically was definitely not the problem. The problem with the Celtics offense is a lack of movement overall and a lack of a clear lead playmaker or two. There are a couple of guys on this roster who can be playmaker by committee. Dennis Schroeder, Marcus Smart, Jason Tatum, Al Horford, even Robert Williams, but there's no clear, oh yeah, that guy can just make plays for everybody on the floor, which I think it's bad to rely too much on that type of guy too, but there's a balance to be struck and the Celtics are on the opposite end of the spectrum. If you go back and watch that fourth quarter, for the entirety of those 12 minutes, the offense was watching Jason Tatum or Jalen Brown, more so Jason, because they weren't really going to Jalen in the fourth quarter, which was a problem in itself, but it was the other three guys on the floor, watching what those two guys are doing, or other four when they weren't on the floor at the same time. Point is, 
The offense is those guys. And as I've said a billion fucking times on this channel, building your offense on one or two people as the only ones doing anything is problematic. You want there to be an offensive system that gets more out of the players and capable of doing things on their own, and that also assists the players who are more capable of doing things on their own because the defense is not going to hone in on hone in on them so much if they're not an obvious target, to at least to the degree that they are. What Marcus did say that was correct is that defenses are game planning for Jalen and Jason to try and score the ball, and that's not because they can't pass, especially in the case of Tatum. Jalen has some playmaking issues and Jason's not great, but he's still pretty solid at it. But the problem is that yes, they are game planning for that. It's not that they can't pass, it's that the system that they exist within does not encourage the pass, because everybody's just fucking watching them play basketball. The type of offense where it's just other players watching someone else ISO doesn't work. It will work some possessions, it'll work some quarters, it'll work some games. But in terms of being a good team and a great team and a team that is going to contend for championships, you're not getting far with that being the foundation of your team. And as of right now, that's the foundation of the Celtics offense. But as much as we harp on the offense, what has caused the Celtics downfall this year, what caused it last year, and what's really bad this year is the defense. Last year, the Celtics were a pretty mediocre defensive team in spite of the fact that they had great defensive personnel. The Celtics in this offseason, in my opinion, improved their defensive personnel while negating their most negative defender by getting rid of Kemba Walker, and yet they got worse defensively. Last year, they were 14th, now they're 27th. Why? What the fuck? Like. They got Robert Williams another year. He's been just as good as last year. Jason Tatum is an extremely underrated and good defender. Jalen Brown is often overrated because of his lack of off-ball ability, but still a good defender. And, you know, Robert Williams, as I mentioned a second ago, he does have some rough edges here and there, but he's still good. And Marcus Smart, now overrated by quite a bit, but still a good defender. And with Kemba out, Dennis Schroeder in, who's solid on that end, and Al Horford, who's great on that end. Hell, even Josh Richardson, who sucks on offense, but is a good defender. With all of that, why is this a bad defensive team? The Celtics last year should have been a top five defense. They were 14th. The Celtics this year should be a top five defense. They're 27. And as to where to point the finger in terms of individuals, you can't really do it because the individuals have the defensive talent. There are some poor defenders in the rotation here or there, like Jabari Parker, for example, but it's not bad enough for them to negate all of the good defenders that they have. Jabari Parker's like 12 minutes a game is not single-handedly tearing down their defense. The only thing I can think of, and this really stood out in the Bulls game, is a lack of communication and cohesion with the defensive talent that you do have. It doesn't appear like anybody is on the same page, while from a one-on-one -on -one defensive standpoint, this team can kill people. Like, if you are going against a team that's just gonna ISO every time, Celtics are gonna have a good defensive game. However, the team defense is really bad because no one is on the same page. Just like an extremely talented offensive team that just has a lot of guys who can score the ball doesn't work if they don't have the cohesion necessary, same goes for defense. You can have a lot of really good defensive players, but if they're not playing defense together, you're gonna get burned by teams that move the ball as the Chicago Bulls do. Some of this can be blamed on the players, some on management. I think a decent amount of it, especially this year, because he's off to a rough start, the coaching. But overall, this roster just feels like a compilation of talent, but not a basketball team. When I say this team is fundamentally broken, I mean that because in order for a team to be this bad with this amount of talent, there has to be something wrong with the infrastructure as a whole. If you build a house on a rough foundation, like the concrete is cracked everywhere and it's not very strong, it doesn't fucking matter if you have marble countertops. And having those marble countertops while the foundation is fucked up just makes it all the more frustrating because you see the pieces of a nice house here, but it can't exist because your foundation is broken. I will give the benefit of the doubt still that this team can work itself out, but I said that about the team going into this offseason, and then here we are with an awful start. Either way, talent is not the solution. I'm already seeing people suggest trades like the Dame trade shit that was talked about all of last offseason with for like Jalen Brown or trading one of those two period. That's not the solution. 
The solution is fixing what you have with what you have, not trying to change it. Also, Yudoka's rotations suck, and Jalen and Jason don't play off of each other well. That does not mean that you should trade one of them, that does not mean that they can't play together, but it does limit the scope of their potential as a duo. Even though they are both great individually, in terms of them elevating each other's games, doesn't really happen all that much. But yeah, that's my thoughts on the Celtics. Uh, it sucks because I really like the Celtics. I went and saw them in person because Jason and Jalen are two of my favorite players in the league. Uh, but yeah, they, they suck right now. And I think this is why. Shout out to Rudy for editing this video. But at the end of this video, please be sure to like and subscribe for more NBA content like this. And keep the outro music.